Welcome, the unweighted snapper rig. Here's one I just finished a minute ago. What I'll do, I'll quickly run you through step by step of what I do to bait up fishing for inshore snapper. So inshore snapper fishing, I like to fish unweighted or as lightly weighted as possible. So I might use something like that, tiny little ball sinker if there's a bit of current or um, you know the tide's pushing hard. I like to use 30 pound leader for inshore fishing. What I'll do, I'll quickly run you through exactly how I rig up for inshore snapper as well as how I bait up for inshore snapper. I've got one there <laughs> defrosting in the bowl. My wife will be stoked. Um, anyway, so I use 6.0 or 7.0 hooks, so I'm going to need two of those to make a snail rig. First up, tie the bottom hook on. This is how I do it. I know there's many ways to do it, but this is how I got taught, and this is how I've always done it. I give it six twists. Back through there, back through the top. I think it's called an improved blood knot. Um, bit of saliva, pull that nice and tight. You then got your bottom hook tied on. Tag end, get rid of that, just looks ugly. So there you got your bottom hook on. I personally like to go about two meters a litre. So you got one metre there, two metres there. A little bit extra for your joining knot for when you want to join this to the your main line. Cut that off. So you grab the end you've just cut off, poke it through the back of the hook. That's through the second hook. Slide that all the way down. And then obviously you want the gap in between the two hooks to be roughly your bait size with a little bit of extra room to play with. So yeah, that there is about right for me, for the, the muleys that I'd be using. So then yeah, you want to twist this around the top hook. I go seven twists. Four, five, six, seven. Pull that all nice and tight. And then you need to find the end again. You want to poke that end back through the back of the hook. Pull it all through. Pull it nice and tight. It's easy as that. You then got your unweighted snelled hooks. Obviously before you join it to your main line, if you think the current's a bit strong or you just the fish are holding hard on the bottom, then you want to add a little bit of weight. So yeah, as I say, I've never used for inshore fishing, I've never used a bigger sinker than that. That that plus your bait will always eventually make its way to the bottom. And even if it takes a while to sort of waft down to the bottom, that's what snapper like anyway. That way it'll sort of flow naturally with your burly. Um, so obviously, obviously you poke. Put the sinker on and that'll sit just above your hooks like that and you know that's not a lot of weight at all so that keeps it nice and natural still but sometimes if the current's too hard and you're trying to fish unweighted it will just sit up on the surface there and you know you spend a couple of hours fishing the sunrise and then you realize your bait's been sat on the surface all morning and well that really pisses you off <laughs> that's not ideal at all then up to you whether you get flash with it or not. I do sometimes. Usually my first rig of the morning, I'll get all flash and add all this sort of flashy stuff. If I get busted off on the boat, I simply just tie it. There's no extra flash, there's no nothing, and because I'm rushing it by that stage, and it is what it is. So you could go little glow bead, obviously just slide that down. Um, something really flashy like this one. This is actually from Black Magic Tackle. These flashes are dynamite. Um, so obviously if you slide that right down, something like that, set above your bait, just dancing around, um, they're awesome, they work spectacularly. Because you're only fishing 30 pound, obviously if you're targeting big snapper like we like to, um, they do have big powerful jaws so they can bite you off. A little trick that I like to use sometimes is like a little rubber tube, it's like a soft sort of rubber. Obviously that being green, it's got a bit of UV in that too, so that is an attractant and it'll, you know, it'll make snapper bite. But 
kind of more importantly with that one, as you'll see, you slide it right down and you jam it onto your top hook there. And the reason for that, reason for that it looks good, but more importantly, if a big snapper comes in and he smashes your bait, that covers the first sort of two centimetres of your line. So sometimes the snapper will come in hot, he'll bite, get your bait and the line, and he'll snip you off. Whereas if you've got that little two centimetres or so of protection there, he might come in, he'll hit that rubber, you know, get the hooks in him. But because you've had that there, he stopped you from biting off. And that might be the difference between a personal best snapper and another story you can tell your mates about the one that got away. Quickly show you how I bait up. So get your snout hooks. I prefer to go head down and I don't know why. I just got showed that way many years ago and I sort of can't change my ways. So you get your muley hook. I go just in behind the head there. Good hook exposure. And then the, the top hook, which is closest to your rod, I go through near the top of the tail there, spin that one around, and back through, the, um, back through your bait. And you've left enough line in between your snells to be able to twist them. So now, I don't know if you can see that in camera, but you've got, you know, wicked hook exposure there, good hook exposure down the bottom, and that there's just going to float down the burly trail nice and naturally. Going back probably three to four years now, I used to do a lot more beach fishing than I did boat fishing, so casting and, you know, you don't want your bait flying off, so I can't stop using this stuff. I don't know if a lot of boat guys use it, um, bait cotton. But I can't, often I can't not use it. If there's no pickers in that around, I won't use it. But if there's little pickers picking at your bait, I always use bait cotton. So by the time you twist a little bit of this on, bear with me for a sec. So you use it to hold your hooks in place. It holds the bait together because these baits are really soft. So that there gives you greater hook exposure because you've been able to pull the cotton there really nice and tight. You've got good hook exposure, good hook exposure down the bottom there as well. Um, and obviously another key factor of the cotton is so if there's pickers in that around, they'll come in, they'll be picking at your muley, pick, 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 you know, there'll be bits of crap going everywhere, creating its own burly trail, but often the pickers will just take your bait off. But with the cotton, you know, they might pick half of it off, but because this has got all cotton on it, there's half that stays on there. So then by the time the big snapper comes around, there's still a manky little bit of bait on there, and he'll still smash it, rather than just having your hook set there with no bait on it. So yeah, that's him there. So yeah, depending on current, put a tiny little ball sinker on there. Um, get flash, add some flashy things if you like. Probably the last thing I often do to my baits, I'll often just trim the tail off, so it's only a tiny bit. Trim that little part off. I feel like sometimes the tail might sort of make it spin, which isn't very natural, as well as when you're missing the tail, obviously that's a big open wound now, so that's going to be leaking blood and oil out, sort of getting, you know, that adds to the, the flavour of the bait. So there you have it, that's Inshore Snapper Bait Basics. But yeah, if you found this video at all helpful, please subscribe to the channel. YouTube's not easy. Hey, let us know in the comments what you thought of the video, and if there's anything I'm missing that you think could help me out, definitely let me know. Any further questions, just smash them into the comment section, and I'm happy to help where I can. Cool, enjoy. Mm -hmm.